in fact, uh, you know, you were willing to contradict things I've said. And, and to me, that that speaks to your desire to be neutral in the situation. So I, I appreciate it. And like I said, I do have people that I am connected with that are friendly with Brendan. I don't know Brendan. If I knew Brendan, I can give my actual opinion. I've gave my opinion on the gringo poppy. That was easy to do. But uh, with this. So are we hypothesizing that the friend that he's talking about is probably Jesse on fire. Is that what you're thinking? That guy that looks like he's fucking either been doing seven million lines every single day full of addies kratom and coffee or maybe more um i'm assuming that's probably his source right and he probably like faking ah, yeah we can help them. so maybe it's jesse on fire that's his source i'd imagine so this whole situation like i said we're just getting your side over here and i gotta be honest with you like i am leaning towards your side because this is the only side we're hearing you know i mean there's really nothing else we can go by um other than a unbiased journalist allegedly quote unquote is now telling the guest that he agrees with his side yeah man keep winning brother reddit that is just very unhappy with brendan yeah yeah but also like i still haven't put out all the evidence i have like not that there's any like bombshells of like like I, you know i showed you on my phone like maybe some of the stuff i haven't really reviewed it in terms of like what the what the claims are but like i don't know what the fuck he's talking about the six months of you know clips not being to like a kid <laughs> to me that should just be like inherently like a ridiculous claim because why would you like be paying somebody for six months of work that they never did and you're like the boss like what does that say about you but like also he didn't name anything so all these things like i think you can sort of inherently tell there's a lot of issues with the story but yeah again like i'm i'm calling you a pathological liar brendan like if you care enough about your reputation to pass on this information through somebody else i think you care enough to rebut it right because this makes you look really fucking bad and and none of this was said privately to me ever like you had you could have emailed me you could have texted me i only blocked you after you sent me this ridiculous fucking um like i did text and i put these texts saying another thing blocking people is gay as well i never block anyone i don't care like just stop talking to them it's not that deep He's a former boss also, and he owes you money. Why are you blocking him for? Like, what? what is this weird, passive-aggressive, you know, thing that you're doing where you're pressing the button on your fucking phone thinking you're doing something? Oh, that will shut him up. It's like, just get your money, sort your business out, and then move on from there. Blocking people that you work with before because they don't do the way you want to. I, I don't know. I just find it super bizarre, personally, for me. But I don't block anybody. Blocking is weird. Thing is online where he's like, he after I went on Red Bar, he's like, you should be proud of yourself, and I go, you should be proud of yourself too, dude. And he's like, you were my friend. Like he goes, why would you do that on a podcast? I'm like, dude. Like, wait, he's wait, hold on a second. Uh, he said he sent you a message after you did Red Bar. He did. Yeah, I'll read it out loud now. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ, man. What's he gonna do in LA? Like, yeah, let's just put this out there. Do you remember there was some people in the scene connected to the JRE Extended Universe? who were saying that Kalila and Annie Liederman were essentially blacklisting themselves from stand-up because of what they said about Brendan and obviously, um, what's his name? Uh, Brendan and Callum to a certain extent, right? That it was, it's going to cause them issues in the scene because they kind of exposed them and people wouldn't want to work with them because it's going to put people in awkward positions or whatnot. Cool. I think it's stupid because essentially they're sharing their experience with those guys and they should be feel free and they should feel at ease to share it without fearing that they're going to lose their careers because they're outing fucking creeps or they're talking about experiences that they didn't like. It's not that big of a deal. People, Guys are creepy every single day. It happens. You choke up to the game, you keep it moving. If it's not actually your character, but if you're fucking fighting against it that way, clearly it shows that you've got some other characters to hide. So at that moment, they said that. All right, cool. If that's the case, what, what about BGL? What about BGL? He's getting on podcasts, going on a podcast tour, airing all of Brendan's dirty laundry, exposing things behind the scenes that, again, I said it before that I know most of it because I'm balls deep in the fucking homeless cats and the T5K subreddit. I'm in there. I'm a homeless cat. I'm in the kitchen, you know, make, cooking up some fucking orange chicken and shit. Fair enough. But to the everyday person who just watches the stuff on YouTube, you probably don't know some of the inner goings on and the like the you know the background lore and all this sort of stuff. But he's confirming and reaffirming loads of stuff that general people don't know, airing all the business out there. Surely this isn't going to be good for his career either. You would imagine, if that's the case, if if we're saying Annie Lederman and Kalila might get blacklisted for airing out Brendan and Brian and to a certain extent, Chris, then what's this going to do for BGL's career? Is this really going to help him in the long run? Like, for all intents and purposes. Again, I'm not a fan of the guy or any of the people involved, 
but just for his career prospects because what is he what else is he going to do he's tasted the fucking the juicy dopamine hits of these streams and the engagement he's been getting on into on reddit i'm assuming his dms must be blowing up people asking him about gossip about this and that and this and that and that he's kind of tasted the sweet sweet nectar of those dopamine hits he's not going to go and work a regular job in target he's not going to get a fucking pt job at a gym somewhere he wants to be this guy in media that's what he wants now so he can't go back or so he's going to try and keep this thing going but how much more can he give up information over time and who's going to want to work with him in that industry that's the issue he has at hand really it's a very weird tactic i think and again this is all done not on his platform this is all done on somebody else's channels and stuff so it's not even like he's monetarily fucking gaining from it. Like he's not getting any AdSense from this, no donations, no followers, no upvotes, no, you know, what you call it, likes, no comments, no subscribers, like zero. He's just getting like, you know, this shit. Weird. Here we go. <clears throat> Hold on, let so, me zoom in on this. Here we I'm go. Gonna, uh... Why does he like holding up? Why is he holding up an iPhone phone to a webcam to read out the text? Just read it out. No one's going to be able to see the fucking all the words out. Just read it. We know you got a text from him. We don't. We, don't, we know you're not lying. Just read the text. A lot of cats have already seen this, but like, um, I'm gonna try to <laughs> Just make sure you don't show any numbers. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, so the first can, can you imagine if Brendan Schwab's mobile number got out there? Holy shit. This one is, hey, brother, you know, um, I don't like the way things went down between us. You're a great friend to me. Working together makes it fucking tough. No, it doesn't. Um, like, you know, working with you makes it tough. But like, again, I work my, my ass off for this dude. Anyway, the, the drama part of it starts where he goes, you should be proud of yourself. That's sarcastic, by the way. I don't know if a lot of people got that when I posted it. And I go, yeah, so should you, dude. Thumbs up. He goes, uh, you were my friend, man. And I go, you weren't my friend. And I say that because, yeah, you were my friend at some point, but then you started acting like a fucking asshole and undermining me at every turn and talking shit about me, you know, behind my back and just generally exploiting me. So he goes, maybe I didn't handle certain things always right as a boss, but to go on a podcast for what? which is a stupid question to ask because like you would go on podcasts and talk shit about me when we were friends. Right. So it's like, okay, so you can air out, you know, you're this guy's a fucking loser, man. Uche, I don't honestly, darling. No, I don't, I don't agree. I think she says that no BJ pretending like he's one of us. I blame the sub for dick riding. I don't blame the sub. Honestly, Uche, I don't blame the sub. Think about it. Right. This entire time we've been laughing and giggling at Brendan Shaw and flipping the fire in the kid drama. For the most part, we've not really had anybody really confirm or clear up or ascertain or give insight to anything going on behind the scenes. Nobody, not even Malik who got fired in a really unceremonious type of way. No one's come out really and said anything. And especially when you add it to the fact that Brendan is fucking Joe Rogan's guy, everyone was scared to say anything and that's attached to the community scene because they don't want to mess up the opportunities of trying to get onto the fucking Joe Rogan experience. So, you know, everyone kind of was mute on it. Obviously, Brendan kind of fucked it himself when he did the whole Bobby Lee thing, the Annie thing. It kind of exposed him and obviously then Gringo Papi came out and it was just too shit and too bad to ignore. So this is the first time somebody from the inner circle of TFAK, Fit Boy Production Studio, Hollywood Picture, Movie Max Industries has come out and said something. So I don't blame the homeless cats for fucking feasting and fighting over the scraps that he's fucking leaving all over the fucking kitchen. I don't blame them for absolutely gorging at his plate because it's the only time we've actually gained insight into it. But if you really deep it and you really analyze it for real and you look at it he hasn't really revealed things that we don't really know about it's not a surprise anything he said um, i think if you've really been paying attention you would have kind of guessed a lot of it so i don't really blame the homeless cats for fucking sucking him off too much if anything i just bl i just feel bad for the guy because he's mistaken them sucking him off in this moment because he's given them information that they want for them being fans of what he does None of those guys are going to follow him on his podcast. They're not going to pay attention to the stuff that he does. They're going to get bored of him rather quickly when he reverts back to who he actually is. And, you know, his personality is kind of attached or detached from Brendan. So I think the sad thing is that he's mistaking this intrigue and this fascination with how Brendan is behind the scenes with actually people caring about him. That's what he's mistaking it for. And, you know, 
let's see what happens anyway. Maybe he might turn around and prove me wrong, but I think, you know, it's going to end up being what it's going to end up being. Your frustrations of me talking too much over the weekend and, you know, my wife that you just met and you're shitting all over her, but, like, I go on a podcast to speak about my experience in a matter-of-fact manner. And that To be fair, the thing that cringed me out and I knew I wasn't tapped in, I wasn't, because I knew, I've always, you know, there's no collective hive mind when it comes to this sort of shit. Everyone's got their own opinions. But I knew I was kind of, away from everybody when i was getting downvoted posting that i didn't you know find any of this stuff you know funny I, if anything i think in general it kind of made mark look bad that you know he had one bad falling out with brendan as a boss and he completely went and fucking exposed all of his business out there it's fucking obscene but it also kind of made me you know throw up in my mouth a little bit when i saw they changed the fucking subreddit picture to a picture of bgo's face so after Ucha said so, after all those times of going out of their way to blur his face and deleting posts of people posting his actual face without it being blurred out, to then changing the fucking icon image of the subreddit to BGL's face, I was like, oh, okay, I'm not like all these guys. But it is what it is. It is what it is. It's, you know, we're not all, you know, we don't all think alike, but that for me, I wasn't down with. That's an issue. I said, hey, you treat people like shit across the board. He says, that's not true. LOL. Uh, I say, hey, dude. And then he says, it's all good. Wish you the best. I go, you realize you're going around the country telling people I send shitty dick pics, right? Exactly. I think Eve said the best thing here. I still find it entertaining enough to help pass time at work. Fuck this being my actual life. Though. Exactly. This is entertaining enough as it is. I say already, this is like, and I guess not gendered. It's more so just to kind of describe it. It's not like a gender thing because I know there's women and stuff watching this stuff. But I just think this is like the male version of kardashians it's just what it is there's no need to write a synopsis about how chloe and Car you know kim's relationship is deteriorating over time and is kendall really happy about this it's no there's no need to write dissertations and essays about it just enjoy the fucking drama enjoy the trashiness of it enjoy it for what it is it passes time it kind of lets your brain not think too deep into it you get some giggles and some laughs and you can continue on with your day but imagine if this was actually your life like, this is actually BGL's career. Like, he has to pay rent, mortgage, a car note, uh, support a wife to go out on holidays, buy clothes and shit uh, around this nonsense world that they've kind of created themselves, that they've created for themselves. No, no, no parts in it whatsoever. That's why I'm happy and I don't get offended when I hear these comedians say, oh, regular civilians. I'm happy to be a regular civilian. Fuck having to, you know, have this be my fucking life day to day. Fuck that. I'm happy to be a regular civilian, you know, out there re working a regular job and living a regular life fuck all this shit um and then in response to him saying it's all good wish you the best to go ha ha fucking pussy the <laughs> moment she gets real but which meant like you know the moment she gets real oh and he always does this like i go like i start to list off shit he's like you know hey man i'm good i'm gonna let you it's like oh because you can't confront reality weird um and he goes i go the moment she gets real i go you need to be honest with yourself you don't just treat me like shit. You treat everyone like shit. And I've tried to explain that to you, but you're not interested in hearing that. And then you left. Niggas ride reading out his diary to us. We don't fucking care, man. Left me this stupid voicemail. What's up, brother? What's up, uh, brother? Um, you hurt me, brother. Voice now. <laughs> so not to text. For obvious I don't, reasons. I don't subscribe to it. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I've been contemplating whether hitting you back up. Um, you seem really upset. That's it. No, I don't. Um, I didn't. Man. Do you want <laughs> Sorry, but that's upset face. That is a, um, that is a, uh, that is upset face. That's that face, that thing with uh, Michael B. Jordan. Do you remember there's that video of Michael B. Jordan at the NBA game when I think it's like post his breakup with Laurie Harvey? Because I think the rumors or the story was that Michael B. Jordan proposed to Laurie Harvey and she said no or something, right? That's that's the story they, they leak out there and she kind of broke up with him and he was super in love with her. And then uh he's at the basketball bar in the next day and he's like you know, licking his lips. This kind of looks like it. This this I swear reminds me of that face that Michael B. Jason does where the camera comes to him and he has to kind of pretend like he's all good. <laughs> Don't hurt me. You got me, brother. You got, you got me. Oh, got oh, me. Oh, oh, um, I'm bleeding out. I don't understand it. I don't. I, I don't understand it. Your friend. It's it's weird. I'm I'm not even mad. I'm not, I'm not even mad. I'm mad. I also find it funny and cool that Brendan talks exactly the same way to his friends as he does on camera. I don't know why that made me laugh and it was funny. Like, he's the same sort of cadence and the same sort of phrase. Hey, brother. You know, you got me. I'm, I'm not even mad. Honestly, I'm not mad. I don't know why. I'm not, it's like, he's, like he feels like he's on a podcast or something. It's so funny. Don't you think? <laughs> you know, I'm not even mad. 
I'm not. I don't know why. It's weird. I'm not mad. I'm just hurt, man. I'm sad about it. It's all about uh, me. I'm not even hurt. You're a friend, man. You're a really good friend. You don't have a ton of friends. He said, you know I don't have a ton of friends. It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Why? I hope you're doing okay. Bro. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're doing okay. Obviously, you're mentally unwell, uh, and that's the reason you're doing this, right? Even now. Even now, you know, here, if you need anything, with, if you need me to just like pay you the money um, that I owe you from, you know, months ago. Job, like, <laughs> despite all the bullshit we're dealing with, I hope you're okay, man. We're dealing with. I truly, truly love you like a brother. You were great to me, man. You were. You were a good dude, and um, I miss you, man. I hope you're okay. I doubt you text me back. But then I did, and he had blocked me. You have, you know, you feel the way you feel, and that's valid. So I guess the blocking thing, because I was, I was saying it's kind of gay, but I guess in that world, the blocking thing is more so preemptive, isn't it? So I guess they both knew that they were both trying to piss each other off, and to show, to kind of power play, you block first before they block you, kind of thing. I'm assuming that's what they're doing, which is equally, equally equally if not way more gay like <laughs> you're having this fucking silent tete a tete like who's gonna block who first like fucking hell man go outside and kick a fucking ball for fuck's sake Alan, if that's the way you feel man if that's know, the way you I feel change, I, don't, I don't know what to do you know but uh yeah I hope you're okay man that's it so my wow. takeaway from it you know of course I'm happy to hear your response but like very manipulative, right? It's very sympathetic, and you almost go like, oh, poor baby. But then yeah. you go like, he takes accountability for zero things, right? And now maybe he feels like it's all my responsibility. Okay, that's fine. You should say that then. If I thought that, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck is – like, that was all your fucking fault. Like, I'd be mad because I'm not even mad. Oh, you're not mad. Oh, thank you for, for being so gracious and not even being mad at me being honest about the ways in which you treated me like shit. Then he goes, I'm, I'm really hurt. Makes it about him. Then he then he then he implies like ah, it just sounds like you're really upset. Listen to the Red Bar interview that he's responding to. There is not a hint of malice. There's not a hint of anger. I'm speaking matter of factly. And in fact, like you saw me get riled up on this podcast today. But some of that was like hearing these accusations for the first time. You do get angry and you do get upset. By the time that I was speaking on my experience with Red Bar, I had already let my emotions settle for several weeks and i don't like to speak out on things when i'm angry mm -hmm. that's never my style is to like have a reaction and just blast it because i go i need to think this through i'm angry i need to go you know lock myself in a room and figure that the fuck out and i went back and forth on whether or not i would and i only decided to speak out when i felt like i got enough information and talked to some people that had a similar experience and it crossed over to be like you know what i need to do this for not for more than myself it was just myself I'd be less interested in doing it. Maybe I'd still do it. But like, if you know me, you know, that's not how I'm really driven. And I've had situations like this before where I, I kept it private and I've emailed people and just told them what my issues were. And some people actually can respond to that, you mm -hmm. know, and go, you know what? You're right. But I always will lay it out for people. And I'd done that with Shaw before. And so even the idea of like, I don't understand. Did you not realize that that entire interview in Red Bar, Red Bar was fucking mocking him to his face? Or am I the only one that's, that felt that way? Red Bar is a fucking legend. I enjoy his content, but it was clear that he was fucking spinning that guy like an absolute frisbee. He tried to get a lot out of him. He didn't really get much out of him, but it wasn't necessarily a charitable interview. He didn't necessarily, you know, he wasn't in awe of BGL. He, he despises the guy. If anything, he probably thinks less of him for exposing Brendan than he did before. Probably. I'd imagine so. But he didn't, it wasn't a good interview. Like, it didn't make him look. <laughs> Does he not understand that he was taking the piss out of him? Or am I, or am I mistaken here? <laughs> Missed you as thanks for the stream and saying what a lot of us are thinking. People are bowing down to BGL, but I get the differ. Yeah, exactly. Big up, Uche. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate you. Yeah, I beg the differ as well. To be fair, I, ne I, never, I never was sold on it just because of the personality. Of, again, it's not post BGL's fault. I'm just responding to his personality, what he projects, because I've been to LA a couple of times only. And I remember one of the things that really kind of made me have a bad taste in the back of my mouth was going to bars and parties with people who were trying to make it and this kind of fake type of like trying to be cool and down in simple like this personality that they had it just drove me crazy and it kind of rubbed me up the wrong way but when you go to like regular dive bars and you hang around with regular people in LA it's fucking the best but remember you're surrounded with people in the industry that kind of vapid leechy clout chasing thing is horrible 
I remember precisely talking to a couple of guys, and when they figured out that I wasn't, I wasn't nobody. I was just there on holiday. I was going to a fucking Odd Future festival. They legitimately, when they when they found out that I, I wasn't anything, they legitimately turned their back and walked away. <laughs> it was like a movie from. It's like a scene from a high school movie where the kids getting bullied and shit. They literally turned their back and walked opposite directions. It's like wow either my breath stinks or I'm not you know I'm not a good conversationalist or they clearly saw that they couldn't get anything from me and they walked away so when I see BJ and how he acts it reminds me of a lot of those guys I met so I don't really respond too well to it but yeah I just didn't understand the premise of it because I was looking at all the stuff online again some of the insights have been interesting but I was trying to dig deep on a story first broken on Reddit I was like what's the issue here really him and Brendan had a falling out people fall out all the time that you work with but the way he was exposing Brendan didn't make sense. It didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't marry up the same guy who six months ago was literally on my channel, re- leaving Bible scripture length responses. Basically, I, I didn't even read it. I, f- I remember reading the top couple of too many words, basically. But in the gist of it, he was kind of saying, you know, kind of pushing back on something that I might have said in the clip. But I'd assume he'd be using more forceful words or whatever, trying to assert himself. Whatever, cool, do it because he's your friend at that time. I just couldn't marry up that person who was leaving Bible scriptures under my videos to this person who's suddenly going on one of the most hated people in flipping comedy and Red Bar's channel and divulging all the gossip on his, you know, former manager or sorry, former boss who is one of the most hated people in comedy. Also, it just didn't marry up. Like, how is this the same person? And if, if, if anything, it made BGO look worse because he was just six months ago leaving fucking Bible scriptures under my videos and other people's comments and shit. So it's like, what? And then he gets to the heart of the issue. What's the heart of the issue? Brendan wasn't a good communicator, allegedly. Um, didn't give him encouragement. Um, didn't set the parameters of what he wanted in terms of, you know, uh, fucking deliverables in terms of social media move the goal person certain expectations minimize contribution or service you get whenever you work in a shitty workplace every we've all done it we've all worked in shitty workplaces and then he owes him money so, according to bj because he feels like he did some work that he wasn't paid for cool sort that out person to person if it doesn't go the way you need to go to kick up a fuss online if you need to be about the money and keep to that and maybe threaten to sue but all this other stuff just seems weird because he was excusing this behavior of Brendan six months ago. And now suddenly it's an issue. For me, that kind of stinks a bit. It stinks a bit. Just me. It just stinks. But maybe I'm wrong. I've laid it out very clearly in writing multiple times for him, all these issues that he had. And he gives him the same treatment of, I, man, I just... Um, I don't, I don't understand. So you're saying you're saying basically this is not your first rodeo. He always comes back and, and plays the victim right. and he's sorry right. and this and that. Dust up, it's always, hey, man, I didn't like how you, you did things. What and, and to Brian's credit, by the way, I've had... Yeah, exactly. Evie said the, 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 the fucking summed it up perfectly, Evie. At the heart, was it? The heart of the issue is they're all bullshit. Sorry, they're all trash humans. Exactly. And that's what I don't like about this whole thing. I know I'm full of shit. I just don't like when other people pretend like they're not full of shit also. So if you're there pointing fingers at Brendan and how he acts and how he goes about it, could you also admit that you may also be a piece of shit yourself? You may also have some of the traits that he has, hence why you kind of, you know, were drawn to him and you wanted to defend him because you felt like there was some kinship there, there was some familiarity there, blah, 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 blah. Come on, let's be real. But he's not doing that. Brendan's a bad, boo- the bad guy. You know, and then he's the fucking the angel in the situation. It's weird. I had a couple dust ups with Brian, little some disagreements, minor things. He'll look at me the next time I see him and go, Hey man, come here. I'm sorry about yesterday. That was wrong. I was a little heated, whatever, and I Hey, hey come here. I can go, Yeah, man, me too. I I'm gonna take responsibility. And to me, like that's the masculine thing to do is like take complete ownership. If the other person doesn't want to accept your apology, you can't force them. If they don't want to take account of he, he needs to go on fresh and fit. All this fucking pseudo masculinity, manhood, um, you know, nonsense he's spouting. He needs to go on fucking fresh and fit. This is what he sounds like. He needs to create a comedic fresh and fit, whatever that means, right? Some sort of version of it. That's what he needs because this is fucking annoying. What is all this stuff as a man, as a this? Bruv, you work for a podcast. It's not that deep. These niggas are going on as if like, they're legitimately in the fucking Navy SEALs or some shit, or they're fucking, you know, building a startup or some shit. It's not that deep. You talk about current events in the news, you make some jokes here and there, viral topics here and there, that's it, and you plug your comedy dates. 
you have to post some of their reels and Instagram things on socials. It's not that deep, man. Relax. Ability for anything, you, you can't force them, but Brennan has never once looked me in the eye and said, hey, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And I think he's done a lot wrong, and I dismissed a lot, and we kind of like, I'd let it go, but what he's never done, what you didn't see here, and what you did, you're not going to see in anywhere in the text is going, if you have a dad or a parent that's like that, and didn't never say sorry or never hugged you, don't you just move on? It's not, it's bad. Oh, my dad didn't hug me, never kissed me, never said I love you. It's not the best way to, to be brought up, and maybe it might have some issues long, along down, down the line. But surely after a certain time, you just put up with it, and you just move on. And what you try to do is correct the things that you, you know, didn't like growing up or I didn't get much affection. I, I wasn't given much encouragement. And you try to correct those wrongs with your kids or people that you know or anyone that comes around you. You'd be overly loving, overly supportive, encouraging, blah, blah, blah. That's what you do in it as a human. You just try to make the best of it. So I don't know what all these complaints are about. Like, I don't know. It was wrong of me to do this thing that's never happened. And that's also very telling. You know, mm. wow. Holy smokes. I'm stopping it right there. That like, that is like a mic drop. I was going to go into the club. <laughs> he's tired. <laughs> he just right. He's bored. That was not, that's, that was not a mic drop. He just wanted to go. He just he's hungry. He wants to go meet his missus, go hang out with his dog, play with his kids, go on the PlayStation. He's just done with this interview. He's fucking bored. <laughs> Uche was right. He's fucking bored. That was not a mic drop. I know when somebody's trying to get out of a conversation and leave, that is somebody just waiting to leave and having an excuse to leave. 